Hey Sakafed guys, can say here, I asked, you responded, so in today's video I will show you, at least I'll try to explain in the best way that I can how to unlock your bootloader, because I've already done it, I don't have any other G7 lying around, so it's kinda unfortunate. But it's a stressful process and you do want all the help you can get, so let's get started. Again, my name is Kensi, you're here for the tech, and this is Kevin Insider. Okay, first I'll try to talk slowly because I want you to understand what I'm saying because I don't want my accent to kick in and destroy anything that I'm currently saying. Second, this video is sponsored by That's a Drug. As long as I'd like to say this, we're not there yet. So guys, please subscribe. Uh, I'm following the exact same step I did on my own and only smartphone. If anything were to happen, that's on you. You should read the written guide until you can sing it from the back of your head. Fourth, I suggest you to have a second computer, or one with two drives with two versions of Windows. As an example, mine has a 128GB SSD and a 1TB HDD. They both have Windows installed in them for different purposes. Sometimes fastboot won't properly work, so a backup computer is generally a good idea. Also, make sure that your USB cable is fine. Some reported that a USB 2.0 port is sometimes beneficial. If you live somewhere where, where there is a possibility of power outage, please make sure that you get that covered. You should have a good battery or, a, or any backup generator. Fifth, backup all of your data, restore your deleted files, unlock your locked files, backup your call logs if they are important to you, then copy all the folders present on your phone to your computer. You'll deal with them later. I've linked the guide on in the comment section, so go ahead and load it on your browser. If it's your first time reading it, pause that video and come back later until you get what it's saying. You're gonna need the zip file containing all the files to unlock your phone and adb slash fastboot and I'll also leave their link down in the description. Okay, I think that we're good to go. Uh, first, you're gonna have to turn USB debugging by repeatedly tapping on the build number, then go to the developer settings. It's not written on the guide, but I also did enable OEM unlock, so if you have it, turn it on. Install the minimal ADB slash fastboot and make sure that your connection to your computer is okay. Launch ADB, then type ADB devices if it's the first time you should have a prompt asking you to authorize that that computer to do XYZ. If it doesn't work, don't panic. Disable all the overlays present like any message bubble. ADB devices should return something like this. If it did, you're good to go. Download and extract the unlocked G7 where it's not complicated to find, like the desktop for example. Install the Qualcomm drivers and QPST, then reboot your computer. After reboot, connect your smartphone, then boot your phone into EDL mode. You can enter in EDL mode by holding the volume down and power together. Then there will be a countdown. As soon as the screen turns black, repeatedly press the volume up button while still holding on the volume down and power. If you succeeded, the, wind the screen will stay black. If you failed, your phone will just reboot. Now press Windows plus X to go to the device manager. You should see something like Qualcomm HS USB Q D Loader 9008 followed by the COM number on the port section. Now, won't you feel? Just press the Windows key and then it'll be in your recently added. If not, search for it and pin it on your taskbar or on the start menu. Set your build type to flat build and for programmer path, select the firehose inside the onbreak folder. The firehose is the binary that allows you us to talk to the phone while it's in ideal mode. Then at the bottom corner, change the device type to UFS. QField should recognize the port of your device, but just in case it doesn't, just select yours. Go to Tools and press on the Partition Manager. If you get a Sahara error, that means that you have a driver problem. So make sure that you install the 9008 mode drivers, then reboot your computer. You should also reboot your phone from the ideal mode by holding the volume down and power button until it reboots. Okay, take a deep breath. Until now, everything that's happening is normal. You may want to give up 
that's your call, but I assure you, it's worth it. Up until now, you still can do anything to arm your phone. Repeat all those steps if you got a Sara error. Press on the partition manager and you'll see a list of every partition on your phone. Search for the partition called ABL underscore A. Pro tip, they're not sorted in an alphabetical order, so open your eyes because you can miss them. Right click on it and then press read data. This will back up your current partition, then press load image to load the v35 ABL image from the unlock g7 folder. You don't really have to care about the name because it'll just load the data from the v35 image straight to the open partition, the ABL underscore A. Go to where ABL A is backed up, its name read data, etc, etc, something. So just rename it to ABLA backup.bin. Don't ever backup multiple files without renaming them first. You backup, you rename. You backup, you rename because you'll have multiple files renamed with data. And if you flash the wrong one, you'll encounter some problem down the road. Do the same thing with ABLB, back it up, rename the raid data to ABLB backup.bin, then press load image to again load the v35 ABL IMG data to it. Go back to QFill, search for the LEFA partition, do the same thing, right click, read data, then go where it's located, then rename it to LEFA backup.bin. Only after backing it up, you're allowed to press on erase. Search for LEFB, right click, rename, then read data, then rename it to LEFB backup that bin. Then also delete this. There are actually the download modes that you've just deleted. I think that we deleted them to prevent the phone from booting into the download mode. Anyways, you'll need them later. Unplug your phone, then reboot by holding the volume down and power button for 15 to 30 seconds. As soon as the screen goes black, hold only the volume up, then plug your phone. I think you will also hear the disconnection sound from your computer. This will get you into fast boot mode. If not, reboot again by pressing volume down with the power for 15 to 30 seconds, then press the volume down until you get to fast boot. Yeah, it's complicated. Go to the location where the ADB fast boot files are located, or you can just press the window button, then search for minimal, right click on it, and then open file location. Press Shift plus right on any empty space and select Open Power Shell window here. Enter CMD and hit Enter. Type Fastboot OEM Unlock and it should say Erasing User Data. If it says Unknown Command, try with another USB 2.0 port. If it says Rating for Device, you'll need to try this on another computer or figure out the problem with your drivers. Try unplugging, then plugging back your device. Try to run the command fastboot devices to see if the connection is okay. If not, if nothing appears, try to install the Google drivers. Link will be down in, in the description. Trust me, it'll work with another version of Windows. On my end, what I did is I installed QFIL, the 9008 drivers, then downloaded the minimal ADB slash fastboot on another version of Windows and it worked just fine. And then my next problem was that I couldn't load any partition inside, inside the QFIL. I got Sarah errors again. But fastboot was working, so I just used the command flash LAFA, then drag the LAFA to the CMD windows. Which worked, then I proceeded to flash the LAFA by typing fastboot flash LAFA, then drag and hit enter, and again flash boot, flash LEFB, drag, then enter. Don't forget to flash the FRP file by typing fastboot, flash FRP, then drag the FRP.EMG. But even after that, I couldn't reboot and the problem was that the phone tried to boot on the ABLB partition. That happened because I didn't flash the ABLB because techni technically there is another version of the guide on the same page. I chose to follow it because it was easier to understand and they didn't erase the ABLB partition. 
So if you also encountered that problem, my fix was to set my primary partition to the partition A by entering the command fastboot set active A and it worked just fine and I was finally able to use the phone normally afterwards. Uh, don't forget to subscribe because I'll make another video to show you how you can woot by installing Magisk and show you some modules that are worth it. And I think that's been it for today's video. Drop a like if you liked this, subscribe if you loved it and learned something new. My name is Kensei, you're here for the tech and this is Keep Insider.